So you've got this project you have to complete. Maybe it's a school or work project, a YouTube video, an important email to send, whatever. But the point is, every time you think about doing it, you get a little anxious. You know you've got to set aside time to do it, but that time is always tomorrow. You're not in the right headspace, you don't have enough time, you don't have enough energy, you don't have enough information, the deadline is still far away. Whatever the excuse, you're putting it off. But you're still thinking about it. You're taking up precious time that you could be working on the project, maybe right now, getting worried about the project. You know you have to do it, you just aren't ready to yet. It's so frustrating that it's taking up so much of your time and headspace when you haven't even started working on it yet. Well, David Allen, the author of Getting Things Done, would tell you that the reason you're procrastinating is actually because you don't know the next action you have to complete to get this project done. Maybe your to-do list says things like work on the project or finish that project, but those are not definable next actions. Now, you'll have to excuse my voice because COVID finally caught up to me, but if you are in this position, then you are in luck because in this video, I am going to tell you the next thing you have to do to get this project started and ultimately get this project completed. That next action is what David Allen calls the natural planning model. And I now do it for all of the projects that I'm worrying about and procrastinating, usually because they are too daunting to even start thinking about. I use the natural planning model in Obsidian, but you can do it literally any way you want to. And you can find the exact text that I use in Obsidian in the description box below. You can just copy and paste that into Obsidian I'm gonna start this video by telling you a bit about the natural planning model and why it works and then I'm actually gonna bring you into my obsidian and show you how I use the natural planning model and how you can do this within obsidian as well. There will be timestamps below so if you want to skip around to the part of the video that is most relevant to you feel free to do that. So what is the natural planning model? Well it's a five-part method and I'm actually going to pull up short form on my phone because they have an excellent summary of getting things done by David Allen and I'm just gonna walk you through those five steps steps. Chapter three, project planning. So the five steps are one, define your purpose and principles, two, envision your outcome, three, brainstorm, four, organize, and five, determine your next actions. So step one, define your purpose and principles. So your purpose for the project is your why of the project. And pretty much any productivity tube person out there is going to tell you you should start with your why. So that's what we're going to do. And then David Allen explains to us why it's so important to start with the why. First of all, it defines what success is. If you don't know your purpose and intention in something, you can't know if you've succeeded at that thing. It determines the criteria for your decision making. Knowing your why allows you to know whether something is necessary for achieving that purpose. It helps you align resources. It helps you get motivated. I think we all know that purpose is a good driver for motivation. It helps you clarify your focus. And by restricting your vision, it can actually help you expand your options. Because now that we actually have clarity on why we're doing something, our head can go wild thinking of creative solutions to that problem. If you give your brain a problem, your brain's going to start working on that problem whether or not you realize it. So you're going to start coming up with exciting solutions. The other thing the why does is it restricts, like it focuses and restrictions breed creativity. And then we define our principles. So this is kind of a two-part step. And the principles is the thing that I didn't know about actually prior to reading David Allen's book. This was a revelation for me and it's so useful. So your principles are like what you value. What are your standards for behavior? For instance, like how good does the product have to be? Does it actually not really matter? Like your standards are really low for this project for some reason. Like maybe it's just for school and you don't care, you can deal with a C. Or are your standards really high, like someone's paying you a bunch of money for this and it needs to have professional quality and the project needs to look similar or better than other projects of a similar type but by other people. So your standards for creation are really going to dictate how much time and energy and resources and what type of work should go into this project. And we'll get into some specifics later when I give you an example. Step two is to envision your outcome. And that's exactly what it sounds like. Start picturing what things are gonna be like when this project is complete. Some projects I find quite easy. For instance, if I want to crochet a sweater and I'm just watching a YouTube tutorial, that person's already figured out how to get to that place and I've seen their end product, so I already know what it's gonna look like. So it's not so difficult for me to build the sweater and troubleshoot along the way because I know the end goal. Whereas with my dissertation, 
I don't know what the end product is going to look like, right? I can look at other people's dissertations, and I definitely do that so that I can try to envision what this thing will look like when it's complete, but ultimately mine is going to be unique, and so it's much harder to get there, and it's taking me much longer to get there because I'm sort of figuring things out along the way. But if I imagine the outcome of my dissertation, both what it's going to look like and how I'm going to feel and how people are going to react, then that's going to make it easier for me to get there. The thing I actually found most useful about the envisioning the outcome is um, envisioning how I want people to react to it. That also makes me excited to do this project and it, it adds to my purpose. Step three is to brainstorm. So now that you know your how, your what, your why, you're just going to start brainstorming every single thing that comes into your head. Do not judge, do not criticize yourself, do not imagine how people would react to this, do not imagine whether it's feasible or not, do not restrict yourself in any way, just write down everything that comes to your mind or draw out or whatever, however you brainstorm best, it doesn't matter. You should aim for quantity over quality, and you should analyze and organize later. So as you're brainstorming, don't be like, oh, actually, I would have to do that first. No, just keep going. Brainstorm everything that you need. Once you have this solid foundation of what you're doing and why you're doing it, brainstorm is just going to let creative ideas flow freely and naturally. And then on short form, they give you some ideas about how you can brainstorm. We've got mind mapping, patterning, clustering, fish boning, webbing. I don't even know what half of those things are. I just like free write in Obsidian, and I'll show you that a bit later. Fourth step, now that you've got this word vomit on your page or whatever you have, it's time to organize that word vomit. Short form says there's three steps. Determine the most important aspects that must happen in order for the project to be completed and successful. Sort them into components, priorities, and sequences. Fill in the necessary detail. And I find that this organizing is a little bit different for every project. Like, how am I organizing things? Am I organizing things chronologically? Or do I actually have to do some organizing of like what the project is going to look like before I organize how I'm going to approach it? So it's going to depend on the project. And then fifth step, and this is the most important one, is next actions. It says, across the scope of the project, identify every next action that you or someone on your team can start moving on right now. So now you've got tons of ideas about your project, you have some clarity about what's going on, surely now you know what to do next. They also write that this stage brings issues and questions to the surface because you have to break things down to each minute action, and we'll get some practice doing that in a second. And then obviously, once you've got those actions clarified, you just start doing them. And they are going to be tiny actions, like things you really just can complete and say you've completed. So you won't have to become stressed or anxious about tackling this goal because it's broken down into little bits, little actionable bits. So now let's go into Obsidian and I'll show you how I have formatted my Obsidian for the natural planning model. And then I'll actually do that model for an upcoming YouTube video that I'm working on so you can see how I might complete it. So here we're in my main Obsidian vault and you'll see on the left hand side where I house my projects. So here's active projects, here's complete projects because I want to know which projects I'm currently working on um, and I don't want to lose the data from my past projects. I want to keep that somewhere, so I've just labeled a new folder with complete projects. And then down here you'll see templates, and inside there we have a project file template. So that's the template that I'm using to complete the natural planning model. First things first though, let me tell you how to create templates. So if you go up to the top and click new folder, create something called templates or whatever you're going to remember, and then you've got this folder called templates. Now we're going to go down into the settings, and we're going to scroll down and click templates. In here, you're going to decide which folder you want your templates to be pulled from. So mine is from templates. Once that's determined, it's going to show up here on the left hand side, insert template. Then when you want to create a template, you're going to go to your folder, you can right click that folder and click new note. And now I'm going to create a template for the natural planning model. So I'll call it, you know, projects. And then I'm going to write out my natural planning model template. I already have created that. It's called project file template. And here it is. I've got my purpose and principle. I've got my outcome visioning. I've got my idea dump. I've got my next actions and the draft itself. Most of my projects are writing projects in some way. Even if it's like a YouTube video, I still need to write the script. So 
you know, for the most part, my entire draft can just be within Obsidian. But maybe that's different for you if your main projects are drawing or whatever. And the text from my project file template is below in the description box. So if you like this way of doing things, you can just copy and paste that into your Obsidian or into whatever software you use to do your project planning. Uh, just remember that it's in Markdown, so it's going to appear like this in Obsidian, but it won't elsewhere. You'll get little asterisks and stuff, and you'll just have to ma actually make it italics instead of keeping the asterisks. I know I'm going through this super fast, but just slow down the video or pause if you need to. Now that we have a template, I'm going to go into Projects Active. This is my folder for all my active projects, and I'm going to start a new note for the project I'm going to work on. And I think what I want to work on is my next video about David Allen's book, which will just be on the Getting Things Done model. We'll call it Getting Things Done in Obsidian. That's what the video is going to be about. So now, instead of just typing things right away, I'm going to go over here to where Insert Template popped up, and I'm going to click Insert Template. And I want my project file template, so I'm going to click that. And there we go. It auto fills this whole note with what I'm going to be doing in the natural planning model. So let's get started with our purpose and principles. I wrote, you cannot know what a project should look like or how to create it if you don't understand why you're doing it. This includes both its purpose, why this project needs to be produced, and your principles, the standards and values you hold that impact how and what you produce. So I've just put a little descriptor there so that I remember what I'm doing every time I do it. I don't have to, again, get anxious or worried or rack my brain trying to remember how to do this model. It's already there, seamless. So what is my purpose in making my getting things done in Obsidian video? So I realized actually there's a couple purposes, um, and I didn't realize that until I started writing, so this is why this is useful. First of all, I want to help people have less stress in their day-to-day -day life because it's managed in this checklist thing that I use within Obsidian. That's really helped me, and I want to help other people. Secondly, I just want to wrap up videos on GTD because I read the book a little while ago and I want to feel like my reading experience of the book was complete and then I won't have to keep this book on my desk anymore, I can bring it back to my bookshelf. I also want to take people through like step by step within Obsidian and this is going to introduce them to community plugins because I haven't talked about that on my channel before and I know that a lot of beginners to Obsidian watch my channel so I want to like offer them contextual ways in to using the different aspects of Obsidian. And then my principles, really all I care about is creating a similar quality video to my natural planning model, um, which is this one, or my original Zettelkasten video. Like, as long as I do that, I'm happy. I don't know. And if I don't do that, then I'm probably gonna scrap the video and try again. <laughs> now we come to outcome visioning. What will it be like when this project is out in the world? It's much easier to see how to do something once it's already done. So envision your completion of the project so that you know what it might take to get there. And then I've got some prompts for you. What the end will ideally look like, how I will ideally feel afterwards, how others will ideally respond, what else will result from the completion of this project? So I'm gonna fill those out. So I've written that the end will look like my previous video on the topic. I will feel surprisingly satisfied with the result. That's always like my best case scenario for a YouTube video is I finish and I'm like, dang, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> um, how will others ideally respond? I want my like brother who I really value his opinion and my close friends to watch the video and then reach out to me and be like, wow, that getting things done model is really cool. Like I think I'm gonna adopt it. That's really helpful because that tells me that I'm changing people's lives with my YouTube videos. And then also, hopefully that means that I'll get thousands of views on that video because it's well done and well explained and helpful for people. I love that. Um, what else might result? Um, YouTube ad revenue, that's always good. And me gaining even more clarity on how to use this model because I think teaching something is the best way to learn about it. Idea dump. So this is your brainstorming. This is the no judgment zone. Write every idea that occurs to you down so that you don't have to hold any ideas in your head. Do not judge the ideas, aim for quantity over quality, resist organization or analysis. Also see the book on page 73. So if you have the book, you can go there and keep in mind all the different rules to remember when brainstorming. One useful thing is I do know that I already have a note for the book, so I can probably get some ideas to dump in here from that note. That's the beauty of using Obsidian for this sort of thing. So that's the note. I'm going to click in there. Actually, let's 
open in a new tab. And look at that, five step process to mastering our workflows. So I don't even need to go back into the book to remember what his getting things done model is. So I'm just gonna actually, this is from my Medium article on this topic, which you can go read, I'll leave a link below. And I think that's probably useful as well to include in my script. So let's just copy and paste that right in. I'm gonna do a little bit more brainstorming and I'll meet you back here in just a second. So I've filled in some things there, I might do more later. The next phase in the natural planning model would be to organize this stuff. And for me, that might mean moving it around within what I've already got here, figuring out a structure for the YouTube video, something like that. Or I might just move on to next actions and start writing down the things that I already know that I have to do. One of those things might be to organize. And I kind of go back and forth between these next three steps, the like organization and the next actions and the draft. But already I have some like action things to do here. For instance, I have to remember how I found the checklist plugin, which I use for the getting things done model. And then I have to show how I use it. So I'm pretty sure I learned about this from another YouTuber. I'll put them up on the screen here. I just can't remember who it is right now. That's a task I have to do is find the YouTuber I learned about this from. I also have to learn more about community plugins and what that means so I can explain it. Okay, here's classic example. I wrote that I need to write a blurb on what community plugins are, but before that, I need to learn what they are. So there, I've added that action as well. The thing is, if I just put write blurb on what community plugins are, that's intimidating and anxiety inducing because I don't really understand what they are, okay? Like, I don't really know where they come from or how they get inside my obsidian. If I have to right now write a blurb on what they are, that's a difficult task for me. That's a scary task. I'm gonna procrastinate that task. But if my task is learn what they are, well, that's easy. In fact, I can clarify learn. I can say Google. Google about what community plugins are. That I can do. All I have to do is type in obsidian community plugins. Um, what are they, you know? <laughs> and I'll, I'm sure I'll find answers. So that I can do. Up here, I wrote that maybe I could do some B-roll of me running around everywhere, grabbing and collecting stuff for the collecting things aspect of the getting things done model. I mean, maybe I'll end up cutting that. If I don't though, that could be a next action. I can do that anytime. So like film B-roll of me collecting things. <laughs> And now I actually know what I have to do. It's not just this big project where like, I don't know any of the tasks involved in doing it. It's just like film a video. Well, what does filming a video entail? I mean, I need to write the script, obviously. I need to, I don't know, maybe schedule it. I need to film specific aspects of it. I need to learn a lot more. There's so much that goes into it and, and laying out these tiny little next actions that's really helping remove all of the anxiety and the stress and the overwhelm from my brain because now I know exactly the things that I have to do. And then for me, the draft would be the script of this video. So you will see the script of that video when you watch that video whenever it comes out. So I'm not going to spend a bunch of time typing it here, but I would write out the, the draft and I would pull the draft from stuff up here. So that's also kind of an organizational moment. And there's the project, getting things done in Obsidian. So once I'm done with that, I'm just gonna grab that and pull it down and put it in complete projects. And now it's out of the way, I'm done with it. But if I ever need to access it again, it's still there. So that's it, that's the video. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you tackle some projects. Actually, do you remember at the beginning of this video when I had you imagine you were working on a project? Did you think of an actual project that you have to complete when I said that? Were you actually like worrying about that project for the duration of this entire video? Well, here's your next action complete the natural planning model, 
however suits your needs. Write down your project's purpose, its principles, do some outcome visioning, do some brainstorming, and then hopefully you will gain enough clarity that you can actually identify some little next actions and you can do those actions because they're clarified and they're simple and they're little and you know what they are. And if they're not simple enough, make them simpler. I hope that this will clear your head and give you a sense of accomplishment and those states are actually going to help you complete this project instead of just continuing to worry about it. I do have an affiliate link for short form below, so if you are interested in getting short form and having access to book summaries like the one for getting things done, then it's 20% off the annual membership using my link and you'll also get five days free trial so you can quit if you don't like it. And other than watching my videos, that's like the second best thing that you can do to help out my channel. So if you're thinking of getting short form anyway, then please get it using my link. Happy project planning everybody and I'll see you in another video soon.